Hi, this is E. David Crawford, Editor-in-Chief of Grand Rounds in Urology. Just recently, the FDA granted a supplemental new drug application approval for Extandi enzalutamide for the treatment of patients with metastatic castrate-sensitive prostate cancer. Joining me to discuss this is Dr. Andrew Armstrong, who's Professor of Medicine, Surgery, Pharmacology, and Cancer Biology, Director of Research in the Duke Cancer Institute Center for Prostate Neurological Cancers, and the lead investigator on the ARCHIS trial. Andy, could you uh, share with us uh, some of the findings and what led to this approval? Sure, David. As you know, men who uh, develop metastatic prostate cancer, and we call that castration-sensitive or hormone-sensitive prostate cancer, really have a, an unmet need for uh, better survival. Most of these men uh, will develop hormone-resistant or castration-resistant prostate cancer within a fairly short time period when they're treated with uh, androgen deprivation al therapy alone. And, and the ARCHES trial and a, a similar trial called the ENZIMET trial provide level one evidence to support enzalutamide as a, a life-prolonging therapy that can also delay disease progression for these patients who either present with metastatic disease or they develop a relapse after local therapy with metastatic disease, and they're still considered hormone sensitive. So enzalutamide, as you know, is a, a second generation androgen receptor inhibitor. It has greater potency than many of the first generation AR inhibitors like flutamide, bicalutamide, and nilutamide. And as part of really a new form of combined androgen blockade, uh, both the ARCHES trial of uh, over um, uh, 1,150 men and the ENZIMET trial, which was also a, an equally large trial of 1,125 men, demonstrated improved outcomes in these men. And, and, and the ARCHES trial is what the FDA used for, for the FDA approval in this uh, indication. Great. So, um, Andy, thanks for that 30,000-foot uh, view of this. What do you think? What are, what are the implications for urologists and caring for men with prostate cancer? Now we have, uh, you know, it was over 30 years ago that we uh, reported in New England Journal of Medicine the concept of adding uh, glutamide to an LHR agonist improving survival. We've come a long way now. I think we're third generation anti-androgens. Um, so, what what sort of your take home message for urologists yeah. about this? Yeah, that's a great question. You know, urologists and medical oncologists, all providers are, are faced with a much more complicated landscape. We have abiraterone, apalutamide, enzalutamide, and docetaxel all um, in the NCCN guidelines with survival prolongation observed in this setting. We also have uh, treatment of the primary with radiation as an option for these men, particularly with low volume disease. So, the guidelines have gotten more complicated. We, our patients are living longer, so that's good news for patients. Uh, all of these therapies are very effective at prolonging survival above and beyond ADT. So these are all treatments that should be given with ADT, not by themselves. Um, and the, the discussion with patients is really based on their preferences, their comorbidities, whether they're a candidate for docetaxel, the costs of these therapies, which are um, you know, widely range uh, in different parts of the world, particularly for the oral agents, and whether we should be sequencing them. For example, docetaxel with ADD followed by, by one of these agents. The ARCHIS trial and the Enzymet trial actually address some of those questions of whether uh, there's a further benefit of delaying progression after completion of docetaxel uh, with enzalutamide, uh, which was demonstrated. Great. What a, a lot of excitement. You know, it's interesting. I still see patients in second opinion who have been started on an OHRH agonist or an antagonist, and then with two weeks of an anti-androgen, a first or second generation. I don't think that's acceptable anymore. How about you? I agree with that. I think it's important to have the conversation very early. I mean, certainly it's reasonable to get an LHRH agonist or antagonist started Immediately, if you see a patient with metastatic prostate cancer, 
And then, you know, certainly over the next one to three months, have that conversation about how are we going to improve that patient's survival beyond ADT? How can we delay uh, the development of castration resistance and prevention of, you know, spinal cord compression and radiographic and symptomatic progression? These patients all tend to progress within just a few short years. And and these novel agents really extend the lifespan of these patients and should be part of the initial discussion rather than waiting for hormone resistance to develop. Great. Andy, thank you for your time. Anything else you want to add before we sign off? Yeah, I would say, you know, important to these therapies, particularly the AR therapies like enzalutamide, is the maintenance of a really high quality of life in these patients. That's equally important to, to men's lives is not just quantity, but maintaining a really high quality of life. And that's also been shown with the ARCHES data set, um, as well as the Titan and Latitude data sets for abiraterone and apalutamide. So I guess the, the good news for men is that they're living longer, but they're also living better. Great. Thank you very much for your time and sharing this. It's an exciting new adventure in advanced prostate cancer. Thank you, David, for all your contributions also.